Hello and welcome back to Organic Chemistry. Today we will be covering synthesis of ketones and aldehydes. We will look at many different molecules and try to convert them into ketones and aldehydes using the appropriate reagents. We will not be covering the mechanism, so I advise you to look at the mechanisms on your own later. As for now, let's start off with our first molecule over here. Here we have our primary interest is our primary alcohol on this alkane. And what we want to do with this alcohol is try to convert it to either a ketone or an aldehyde. Now, since it's a primary alcohol, can we change it into a ketone? Well, sadly, no. If we try to oxidize this alcohol, it will either turn into an aldehyde or a carboxylic acid. And so to change it into an aldehyde, we have to oxidize it. Now, if you provide too strong of an oxidizing agent, you just create a carboxylic acid. And so we don't want to do that. We want to have a mild oxidizing agent. And our possible reagents is either PCC, either DMSO, or we can use DMP. And we can use either of these, and it will work just fine in creating an aldehyde. And our product would look something like this. Now, if we really wanted that ketone, what we could do is actually react this aldehyde with step one, a green art, where R over here represents any alcohol group, magnesium, and X represents a halide. Then we can add an acid in order to remove the magnesium from the uh, oxygen ion that would have a negative charge on it. And then we can re-oxidize it again, and we can use either, either of these mild reagents, or we can use something like HgSO4 and H2SO4. And if you recognize what this is, this is a combination to create mercuric acid. And that will create this ketone right here, and R is the R group that we added from the green R reagent. So that is one way to create a ketone from primary alcohol. However, notice that you are adding extra alcohol groups to it in order to perform this. Now, if we have a secondary alcohol, the situation flips. Can we create a ketone from this? Well, yes, we can. And we can use either our mild reagents or we can use a strong reagent. And we can just use mercuric acid as one. And it's a real, this is considered a strong oxidizing agent. So be careful when using this, make sure that it is a secondary carbon or secondary alcohol that we have over here and that will make sure that it only turns into ketone. If you use mercuric acid on something like a primary alcohol, you'll just create a carboxylic acid. So over here, we have our ketone. Now, can we change this into an aldehyde? Well, sadly, we can't because this is a secondary carbon. In order to have an aldehyde, we have to have a primary carbon and that's it. Now, let's look at our next molecule. Over here, we have an alkene. Now, what can we do with an alkene? Well, there is one method in order to create either a ketone or an aldehyde, but that would only depend on the substituents that we have over here. On one side of this alkene, we have two carbon bonds, and the other side, we have hydrogens, and that's it. And so, what we could do is do something called ozonolysis. And if we create, if we add ozone along with DMSO, which is dimethyl sulfoxide, what that happens is that it cleaves that middle bond in between the two carbons and basically replaces the, car the bonds that the carbon was missing with an oxygen. And so we get a ketone over here plus an aldehyde. And this is actually a special type of aldehyde. An aldehyde with no carbon bonds at all is called formaldehyde. It's actually pretty unstable. But this ozonolysis basically cleaves that middle bond and it makes sure that even if you have only one carbon bond or actually no carbon bonds at all, you will not get a carboxylic acid. You will simply just get a ketone or an aldehyde. It's a mild form of uh, alkene cleavage. And this is, one, this is one way you can get ketones and aldehydes from double bonds. Now let's look at a benzene. If we have a benzene, can we create a ketone and aldehyde? Well, yes we can. Now how do we get a, creton, a, ke, a ketone? One way to do this is called uh, Fieldscraft acylation. And what we do is provide this benzene with an acyl chloride, and with that, or an acid chloride, as some might say. Now, what this looks like is you have our double, a carbonyl group connected to a chloride instead of an, uh, a hot oxygen and a hydrogen. And then we have any R group, which is, can be any alkyl group. And then if you add this with aluminum chloride, which will be our catalyst, what ends up creating 
what ends up happening is we add this acyl group onto the benzene and it gets rid of that chloride and we just get this product right here. And if you notice, this is a ketone. Now what if we wanted an aldehyde? Say this R group that we wanted over here would be a hydrogen. How would we do that? Well, there's a different method. We can't just use um, an acyl chloride that looks like this. That's not right here. This is extremely unstable. This type of acyl chloride is not stable enough for us to use. And so we have to use a different method. And what we do is use these following reagents. We use carbon monoxide, we use hydrochloric acid, and this is under high pressure. Then we have aluminum chloride, and we also have copper chloride. The carbon monoxide and hydrochloric acid is what will create that specific molecule I just showed you that's pretty unstable. And the aluminum chloride and copper chloride will help um, catalyze this reaction. And what will this create is this benzene ring with, instead of an R group, we have a hydrogen. And so this is called the gadamin koch synthesis. And so this is one way of creating an aldehyde on a benzene ring. Now let's look at our next example. Over here, we have an alkyne. How do we create ketones and aldehydes from an alkyne? Well, to create a ketone, we can do something where we add a mercury ion, we add sulfuric acid, and we add some water. And when we do that, what this does is it adds basically an OH group to one of the carbons and a hydrogen to the other carbon. And these are the carbons containing that alkyne. And what this creates is this transition state where we have something called an enol, which is basically an alcohol group on a double bond. And this is extremely unstable, so it just instantly tautomerizes to some to just a ketone, and that's it. Now notice that this is a Markovnikov addition. The hydrogen is being added to the carbon that has the more hydrogens, and the alcohol group is being added to the carbon that's more substituted. Now, if we wanted to do it the other way around, what would end up happening is ha if we wanted this double carbonyl group to be on the edge, it would be the anti-Markovnikov addition. And so to do that, we have to do something else. Our first step would, would be to add Cyamyl uh, borohydride or dicyamyl borohydride or borane. And then our second step would be to add hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide, NaOH. And this does the same process where we get that transition state for the enol, but instead the enol has the alcohol group on the carbon with the most amount of hydrogens, the less substituted one. And this just creates our preferred aldehyde that we wanted to look for. And so that's an alkyne, and that's how you can create either a ketone or aldehyde. Notice that this is Markovnikov addition in the first step, and the other one is anti-Markovnikov. Now, for our second one, we have a carboxylic acid. How do we change a carboxylic acid into a ketone or an aldehyde? Well, our first step to change it to a ketone would be to add two um, alkyl groups connected, or two equivalences of an alkyl group connected to a lithium. This, and this is basically called an organolithium, where R over here is, represents any alkyl group. And if we add this, essentially, we have something that's very similar to a Greenard reaction, but not quite. And we get this product right here. It's a ketone, and the R group is connected to that carbonyl. Now, if we wanted to do an aldehyde, if we want to create an aldehyde, is that possible? Well, it is. Well, actually, not directly, though. If we want to create an aldehyde, we cannot simply just go straight to it. But there is something else that we know. We can change this carboxylic acid into an acyl chloride or an acid chloride. If we have thymyl chloride added to it, when is this happening is that we have the carboxylic acid essentially, but the OH group is replaced with a chlorine. Now this right here can actually be more useful in creating an aldehyde because since, since we can't go to an aldehyde directly from a carboxylic acid, what we can do here is change this into either a ketone or an aldehyde. Now, if we want to create a ketone, this is just another way of creating ketone from a carboxylic acid, an indirect way. We can have an R group over here, and two of them actually, connected to a copper and lithium. And this is called lithium dialkyl cuprate. This is what that is. And when we add that, we simply just create this ketone right here in our group. And this looks exactly the same as if we just added 
two equivalences of an organolithium. It's just an indirect way. And if we want to create an aldehyde in this situation, it is possible. And to do so, we have this reagent right here. And if you notice, let me write it out because it has a pretty long name, but I'll show you what's kind of interesting about it. Now notice how this is similar to lithium aluminum hydride, but instead of having four hydrogens, you only have one hydrogen and you have this group right here. Now, the name of this now changes to lithium tri butoxide aluminum hydride. This is the full name of it. And just a milder version of a lithium aluminum hydride. Lithium aluminum hydride would be way too strong of a reducing agent. And so, and we just take it straight to an alcohol. And so this is a more milder version and this will give us our aldehyde. Now notice this is useful on the acid chloride because an acid chloride is a lot more easy to reduce than a carboxylic acid. And so this is your method in creating an aldehyde from a carboxylic acid. You create an acid chloride and then you change that to an aldehyde. Now let's look at our next group. If we have a nitrile, how do we create a ketone or an aldehyde? Well, to create a ketone, what we do is we do a Grignard reaction. We simply add the Grignard reagent and then afterwards we just add the acid and then after that third and that, that's it. Now remember how we had that primary alcohol where when we change to the aldehyde, after we change the aldehyde we create a ketone by doing the Grignard reaction and our third step was oxidizing it one more, one more, once more. Well in this scenario we don't. When we add that Grignard reagent, what ends up happening is we create an imine, which is nitrogen with two bond, with a double bond. And this acid will hydrolyze it and just change it into a ketone. And so we just get this product right here. And notice I label these carbons as A and B. These are these same carbons A and B. And so the carbon that used to have a triple bond to a nitrogen now has a double bond to an oxygen. Now, if we want to create an aldehyde from this, one way to do this is by using this reagent right here. And let me write it up first, and then we'll say what its name is. Now, this right here is called diisobutyl aluminum hydride, or a shorter way to write it is this, double H, or diisobutyl aluminum hydride. And this essentially creates an aldehyde of this nitrile that looks just like this. And our carbons A and B are right here. So that's what we can do with nitriles, pretty straightforward. Now, our next group that we're going to look at is an ester. Can we create a ketone or an aldehyde from an ester? Well, if we wanted to create a ketone, we actually can. There's no direct way to do it. There are indirect methods like we had when we had our primary alcohol, where we can simply create an aldehyde and then create a ketone afterwards. Now, the first question is though, can we actually create an aldehyde? Well, we can. If we want to create an aldehyde, we use the same reagent we just covered a second ago, which is diisobutyl aluminum hydride. And this will essentially create this aldehyde right here, where the group that existed right here is now no longer attached to our carbonyl group. Now, say if we had a ring, say for example, we had some group like this, where we have a carbonyl group like that. If we end up using diisobutyl, aluminum hydride, this would give us this product right here. We have our aldehyde, obviously, and we have our carbons, but then this oxygen that we had over here is no longer gone. It's just an OH group at this point. So it's not like this group is completely gone. If we have a ring, you realize that this is a connected structure and the oxygen that was a part of the ester group is now an alcohol. And so that is all for today. Make sure you do cover the mechanisms for all of these. These are really useful, but that is all for synthesis. Have a great day.